Adam here from the Walzer Automotive Group. And what I wanna to do today is take you on a test drive. And next to me here, I have the 2024 Subaru Solterra. So we'll look at some of the updates for 24, look at the exterior, the interior, and then go for a spin around to see what it's like out on the road. Okay, so now we're behind the wheel of the 2024 Subaru Solterra. So like I said, we'll cover some of the updates for 24, but let's start with our cell phone, something we always have with us. I've got wireless charging down here with a little storage cubby that I can close up. And then I've got wireless Apple CarPlay. You can also use Android Auto in here. It's a really cool system on this 12.3 inch display. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but let's put it in drive. We'll go for a spin around. Okay, so there is a lot of different EVs on the market and there's more it seems like popping up every day. But the Subaru is a name and a brand that you trust and there's a lot of good stuff that comes with the Subaru. One of those biggest things being this has the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. So all Solteras are gonna come with the all-wheel drive, which is gonna be great for not only the Minnesota winters, but if it's raining really hard or any sure-footedness you need, the Subaru Solterra can provide. So, the Subaru Solterra we're in today is the Limited model. Now there's a few different trim levels. I think the Limited is kind of the sweet spot. It's sort of that mid-tier trim level. It's gonna give you a lot of equipment and a lot of good stuff for the money. Now, like I said, that 12.3 inch infotainment screen is awesome. Apple CarPlay is seamless. It's a very quick system. Some of the other vehicles I've driven, it gets a little kind of pokey. The screen feels a little bit slow at times, but this one is a lightning fast as far as the responsiveness goes, and it's great. Text messaging, Google Maps, Spotify, all that is gonna be built right into here. And you can also connect with the Subaru app. So you'd have a remote start in there. It can keep track of some of your charging stuff. So there's a lot of cool technology built into the Solterra. Now, one of the other things on the other side here, that's where the update for the 2024 is most noticeable to me. They've gone away from the oval steering wheel. It's now kind of like a square shape, but it feels futuristic to me and cool. It's not quite like the yoke that you find in some of the Teslas. You can still grab the steering wheel all the way around, but what that does, the flatness on the top of this allows you to easily see the digital gauge cluster up there. The previous model, they thought it might be a little bit too hard to see, so they flattened out the top and the bottom but I think it's pretty cool. So with that digital gauge cluster up above there, that's where all your pertinent information is gonna be. Total range, I've got 100% charge. It's an I had 233 miles, which is actually above the EPA estimated mileage. This vehicle rated with the 20 inch wheels would be at 222 total miles. Now that's with the all wheel drive system, but depending on how you're driving, obviously it could be better, it could be worse. It's all dependent on the climate, the condition of the battery, that sort of thing. But overall, this is gonna be rated at 222. Now there are in the other trim levels, it can go up to 227, but really I think the biggest factor is how you're driving. If you got the air conditioning on blast, that's one of those things that's good to research when you're looking at EV vehicles is how the temperature, climate, and different maybe elevation can change the range of the batteries. So looking at our digital cluster here, like I said, that's where all your information is going to be. This has adaptive cruise control, which you can monitor through there. It's going to show you your music, some of your trip settings, and then all of the safety features in here. So one of the things they changed for the 24 model is kind of a low speed hands-free driving. They've also changed something that will help warm the battery when it's really cold outside and just a few other little things. But I mean, overall, all the safety stuff is gonna be there. All of your warnings you can go through, you can adjust, you can change those if you want. If you wanna turn them on or off, there's lots of options there. Now this, like I said, has the adaptive cruise control. It's got lane departure warning. So those are gonna be on the right side of the steering wheel here. So you can kind of set four, three, two, one car length distances ahead of you. And that's gonna keep that distance on the road. So if you're doing a lot of highway driving, it's a pretty cool feature and something that's gonna keep you very safe when you're on the go. Now let's talk about the seats. So this is one of my favorite parts about the Solterra. The first time I opened the door, I was not expecting a gray and kind of blue mix in here, but it does work really well. Now this exterior is the cosmic pearl color and it looks killer out in the sunlight, especially with this kind of yachting themed interior to me. This blue kind of mock leather does look really cool in here and it's super comfortable. Not only in the front seats, these are gonna be heated for the driver and the passenger as well as this seat being power but the second row is also going to be heated so even your rear passengers are going to be nice and toasty and comfortable when the winter comes around plus they're going to have some USB-C chargers back there so you can keep all your devices charged up 
but if you're not hauling people around in the back, you can actually fold those seats. It's a 60-40 split seat. So what that means is you can kick down one side or the other, and it makes it very convenient for kind of bringing some stuff with you. And if you need even more space, yes, this is still a Subaru, and you will often find bikes on the top of these vehicles. So you can obviously put the crossbars up above and bring your bikes or kayaks with you and enjoy the outdoors. So a few other things in the limited model, this one gets the Harman Kardon sound system. And some of the sound systems that get upgraded in some of the models, I could take it or leave it. But this one, when I had my Spotify going earlier, I was very impressed at how good it did sound. There's the subwoofer in the back there, and it really is a pretty noticeable difference from the base sound system. So I think that's one of those worthy upgrades. So what about the ride and drive? If you haven't driven an EV before, maybe you're just considering one, Maybe you've been in an Outback for a number of years or you've been driving a Forester and you like the Subaru brand and you want to stay with it. The Salterra, I think, gives you enough comfort and kind of that familiarity with the Subaru, if that makes sense, that it's going to feel like you're at home, except for it's just really quiet. Now, this is one of the worst roads I can find that I always go on. It's loud. There's lots of little choices in the road and it's comfortable in here. It's quiet in here. The, I mean, that's the best part of the EV vehicles is that you're not taking up that kind of four cylinder turbo wine with it. It's just silent. It's seamless. You can take off from the stop sign and it just goes and the torque and the power is there. I think this one's rated at about 215 horsepower with a decent amount of torque as well. And obviously with the symmetrical all wheel drive, if you put your foot down, you hear a little bit of that electric motor, but it does get up and go. And I think for 99% of the time, this is gonna be more than enough power and juice to get you up going onto the highway or just going around town. But the ride is very compliant. It's comfortable, even in the back seats. The first thing I thought when I sat back there is, this is one of the more comfortable rear seats that I've sat in a while. You could put four adults in this car and you could drive from Minneapolis to Chicago, charging along the way and be comfortable and happy along that trip. It's not squished. And one thing about the EV vehicles is that you get rid of that transmission tunnel. So I have a large storage capacity underneath the console here. And in the back, you don't get that big hump in the middle anymore. So you can actually put five people in this vehicle. One of the other things they changed for 24 is there's gonna be paddle shifters behind the wheel, but they're not really shifters for a transmission. What I can do is I can adjust the kind of amount of regenerative braking that goes so you could kind of see me moving forward. So as I click through it, you'll notice the little four arrows. So I can set how much regenerative braking I want, which will kind of help me build back some of that battery life. Another thing that's really cool, this one gets the 360 surround view monitor. So the backup camera is great. As you can hear, there's cross traffic. I took my foot off the pedal and it's gonna notify me that there was traffic still turning before I'm about to go. So another one of those great safety features to go with that backup camera. Like I said, this has the 360 view camera. So there's actually a little button you can press down here that's gonna pull up a view. If you're trying to back out of the garage, maybe the kids left some stuff in the driveway, you can click that and see what's going on. Or as soon as you pop it into reverse, it's got parking sensors as well. It is a really easy to park system and makes it pretty great for squeezing into a tight spot. But like I said getting in the garage at home but otherwise it's still a Subaru like I said so it's got the X mode so the X mode is going to go between snow and dirt deep snow and mud mode and that's going to help you get the best possible bite and traction if you are maybe heading to a campsite or doing a little bit of off-roading I think this has like 8.6 inches of ground clearance which is going to be very similar to some of the other Subarus in the lineup now the styling on the exterior, some people love it, some people don't love the design of it, but I think Subaru, it's gonna be very similar to that Toyota BZ4X as they've combined to build these vehicles. And I think it's good looking. I mean, especially in this cosmic white pearl with the black accents in here and all the technology you get in this vehicle. I mean, the charging point, I think it's something like zero to 80% can be done in about 35 minutes on the charger. So you're gonna get a lot of range back pretty quickly. It's gonna feel right at home if you've been used to driving a Subaru. And with all the technology and the equipment in here, I think there's a lot to like. Okay, so now that we're parked, kind of our final thoughts on the ride and drive of the Solterra. I love the interior. This gray and the blue and the seats are super comfortable. And I think the interior layout is really nice. There's kind of this different material that runs through and some of the little touch points and accents, it does all work really well together. 
There's a host of safety and technology in here. And the EV, I think they estimate something like you'll save $5,000 in fuel costs over the next five or six years. So there's a lot of benefits in going this way, as well as the Minnesota EV tax incentive. If the vehicle falls under $55,000 on the MSRP, you can qualify for possibly up to $2,500 in incentives. Now, this particular one, the MSRP is around 51.8. So getting the incentive there, as well as the fuel economy savings, I think there's a lot to like on the new Subaru Solterra EV and definitely one to get out, take for a spin and see what you think. So that was just a look and drive at the new 24 Subaru Solterra. So if you have any more questions or you'd like to schedule a test drive for yourself, you can visit us online at walzer.com or stop by any one of our Subaru locations. We'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.